Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw skin in graphite. Now specifically this video is going to focus on how to draw smoother skin for children and younger adults. Now for this I want to start off first of all working with the eye. Now this is what I will do with any subject regardless if it's an animal or a person. I want to make sure that I've got the eyes right before I focus on anything else. Now here, over the brightest part of the reflection, I have got some degree of graphite in that highlight. But if this highlight in the eye is particularly bright, I will then leave the white of the paper showing, just like I am here for the corners of the eye, and then I will darken it up in stages. This ensures then that I've got that highlight as bright as it needs to be, and I can then easily darken that with additional layers if I need to. Now when I work with the structures around the eye, the eyelids, the creases, if I'm drawing older people, the wrinkles around the eyes, all of those will get mapped in first so that I've got elements there from my reference photo that are transferred to my drawing so I know that I am following that reference photo accurately. I use those as my main guidelines and then I can fill in all of the spaces in between. So you can see here that I am starting to hint at those very soft subtle creases under the eye but I don't want to make these too harsh when drawing young people because that's going to make this person look older than they are. So how harsh and defined those lines are is going to really determine the look of our portrait. So for the areas of the skin, I'm actually using graphite powder for my first layer and I'm using a paper blending stump to apply that. For larger areas, I sometimes use eye makeup applicators as well, but for this, for the time being, my paper blending stump was working really well. Now the reason I like to work with graphite powder is you can see that the area above the eye I've been able to darken gradually. I don't like working with my graphite pencils for the first layer on the skin because I feel like you can still see those pencil strokes which can add texture or the impression of wrinkles which I don't want obviously for the younger skin. So I do find graphite powder is a really good thing to use when drawing people. Now the other thing when I do work on the base layers here is I've mentioned already about building up gradually but the use of subtle layers. Now I talk about the use of subtle layers when I draw fur as well. I've got lots of tutorials here on YouTube that cover many different subjects. But for people I don't want to put the darker graphite down first and then find that I'm not able to lighten it back up. So I will like to work with light to dark techniques. I find that I'm then not as overwhelmed by the process. Now I don't draw as many people as I do animals so I like to break everything up into even smaller chunks. Now the only exception to that is when I'm working on areas like the cheek or the forehead because they are larger areas I want to be making sure that I've got the transitions from dark to light nice and subtle and soft and often in order to do that we need to work on that entire section. But here around the eye, you can see, look at how I'm focusing on one shadow, one highlight at a time. Something else that I talk about in all of my videos is the importance of working what is behind an element first and then building up from there. So I had to get the areas of the eyelid in first and then add my eyelashes on top because the eyelashes are in front. I need to be making sure that they look like that in my drawing. So it's always best to work on the skin around the eye and then add those finishing touches like the eyelashes last. Now when it came to working on the nose, this is something where during the real time tutorial on Patreon, this is all available there live now with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So every process is explained thoroughly. But when working on the nose, I really did emphasize the importance of just focus on the shapes, the main lights and darks. Now for me, drawing noses is very similar to drawing hands and feet. The shapes there can sometimes end up looking a little confusing and it's one of those times where I think just trust the process, map it in as what we see in that reference photo and then we find that it actually in the drawing comes together far more quicker. It's when we overthink the process that things start to get more difficult. Now noses, because of the way that they curved, obviously every person's nose is very different. The shape where the highlights are, the shape of the nostrils, the size of those nostrils, even how far apart the nostrils are, all of these things are very, very important. So I want to be making sure that during that first outlining stage, that all of that is very accurate and precise. Now once I've got that in place, I can now focus on the shading. The softness between my highlights and my shadows here across the bridge of the nose where the corner of the eye meets the side of the nose. All of these shadows here are so important. 
Now again, like what I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, if I have the shadow here that I'm working on around the eye a little bit more towards the right hand side or the left hand side, I'm going to widen or narrow the nose itself. So that is going to drastically change what that person looks like. Now this is where I started working with a few more different techniques. I'm trying to apply the graphite in more of a smoother application. Sometimes when using paper blending stumps, you can actually end up with a bit more of a rougher texture. Now for smaller areas, that's not as noticeable, but when you work on larger areas here, when you're drawing smoother skin, you don't really want that kind of texture for the base layer. Now I can smooth out a lot of that with my graphite pencils. You can see at times here, I go over the top with a graphite pencil. I'm using the side of the lead most of the time and then softening that out again with my blending tools but I don't want that blotchy look. If I have that during that first layer, it's hard to sometimes then cover that back up. And as I said, that then is gonna give a very different look to what that skin looks like. Now, when it came to working on the hair, this is what looked like one of the most complex part of the reference photo because the part of the forehead here was in quite a strong shadow. So this side of the face was really quite dark but the highlights of the hair were really bright. So it's one of those things where we'd look at that and think, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna approach it. And before we've even started the drawing, we start to get a little bit overwhelmed and stressed. But actually, this was one of the quickest parts of the entire portrait. I'm using the graphite powder to get that dark base layer in place, and then using a combination of a battery eraser and my Tombow mono eraser to remove those highlights for the hair. Now look at how I'm working in layers. I'm also changing the way that these highlights are curving. Not one strand of hair stands out against the next. It's all about building up that texture. The more texture that I have here for this kind of hair is going to look more realistic, but I must make sure that I don't end up with hair that looks like spaghetti. I don't want to be creating a load of random squiggly lines. I do still want to be following the structure of the hair, the way that it curves and the way that it's directed. Now, one big tip when drawing eyebrows is you can see here that they are noticeable, but they're not too defined. Now, this is going to depend on the person, the way that their eyebrows are shaped, how light or how dark their hair colour is, because that does also affect their eyebrows. But here, I haven't worked with a lot of darker, softer pencils. So for those eyebrows, I didn't actually go any darker, I don't think, than a 2B. It's not needed. I had to make sure that I built up the eyebrows gradually and I didn't just use a dark pencil and put in a load of solid, harsh lines. That really wouldn't give me the realistic look that eyebrows should have. Now for the ear, absolutely, without doubt, I would always recommend to focus on the shapes. Try not to look at this as imagining you're drawing an ear because our brain is really good at making us think we know what that looks like and we don't end up following the reference photo as closely as we should do. So I would only be focusing on my curves, the way that the shapes are, the darks, the shadows, and then by the time I've got that completed, it's going to look like that reference photo. Now, one thing that works really well is if you turn your artwork and the reference photo upside down, that forces your brain to see it for abstract shapes rather than, in this case, an ear. By the time you've then got that completed and turn everything back up the right way, you'll find that it looks really accurate and far more realistic, just like the reference photo. Now, the only difference with this ear is given that the light source was coming from the right hand side, this ear is significantly lighter than the left. So here I'm not applying as much darker powder. I'm also making sure to use a few more of my eraser techniques with that little bit of putty just to remove those subtle, softer highlights. Now that I've zoomed out, the real light source of this reference photo is starting to come into play. The left side of the face is significantly darker than the right. So here, when I'm starting to now add my graphite for the cheek, I'm having to darken it up in stages, going back to what I've mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now, given that it is a larger area, I'm now using my eye makeup applicator here to apply my graphite powder. But where the centre of the cheek is lighter, this is going to help to build up that three-dimensional look of the face, the way that it's curved over the cheekbone up towards where it slopes to the bridge of the nose. All of this here is only able to be realistically achieved if my highlights and shadows are soft. In my Patreon tutorials, because they're all in real time, I often speak about the transition values or transition colours. 
Now in graphite, the transition values are exactly what that sounds like with that mid-tone color. So where you've got a shadow that rolls over towards a highlight, just like the cheek, you want there to be some kind of transition in the middle. You don't want there to be a harsh star and stop point. Now you'll find that when working with graphite, that is often the case for 99% of layers. We don't often actually need many harsh lines unless we're drawing things maybe like buildings and in some cases um, elements like bark and tree texture. But for skin, obviously here, going back to what I've mentioned throughout this video, the importance of subtle layers and blending those layers is what's going to help to build up the realistic skin texture. Now one tip in regards to building up the subtle layers and blending is it's very important not to overblend. Now this can happen when you do use a lot of the paper blending stamps or the eye makeup applicators and also if you do use graphite powder in your work. Because the graphite powder is a beautiful way of achieving that quick but soft look, it's very easy to then overdo it. So what I'll always do is take a step back from my drawing, lean back in my chair and I'll have a look at a little bit more of a distance just to make sure that I am not overly analysing one small area. Now when I do draw people I would say I get each section about 70% complete and I always usually go back and just tweak any areas that I feel need adjusting. With animals and fur I'm more confident I can actually get an area completed and then move on. Very rarely do I then have to go back and make any major changes but here any changes I am making you can see it's to darken up my shadows. I want to make sure that I'm focusing on good contrast. Now when working with graphite because it obviously is all in grayscale here the contrast is so important. If you do feel like your portrait is a little bit flatter, it doesn't quite have that three dimensional look that you're after, it's usually because the contrast isn't quite right. So you may need to darken up some of your shadows or increase the brightness of your highlights. So I do hope this video has been helpful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. And as mentioned, if you would like to draw along to the real time version of this tutorial, then it is available on my Patreon channel now. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list. I upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.